y'all. Welcome to my channel, YouTube friends. My name is Sonara Artis. Thank you for joining. Today, I will be demonstrating how I do long-lasting prep for my nails. Um, typically, for a client who won't come get a fill-in, which I do not recommend, my nails have been known to stay on for over four weeks. Um, so, yeah, I'm just going to show you the way I prep. I'm sure it's really not as different as anyone else but i really go in on the prep i spend a lot of time prepping so her cuticles had already been pushed back off camera and i'm just going in with a 180 sanding bit and just removing the shine from her natural nail as well as going up to that cuticle where i pushed it back and removing any skin that was on her nail bed and um just getting it off of there and i'm not doing anything rough or hard or anything like that i'm really being gentle with it um but also very thorough with it as well and please excuse the dust um i can actually see dust <laughs> from my um drill because i felt to cut on my vent so that's what's going on but the process is really repetitive i'm going to do the same thing to each nail i'm just going to go on and remove all the shine off the nail rough it up a little bit and um, make sure that I'm getting up to that cuticle area and removing the skin that was up there as well. Because if you fail to do these steps, you will guarantee get lifting because our nail beds have natural oils on them. And if you decide to lay an application over skin, of course you'll have lifting. So these are factors that cause lifting. And if you want good, strong nails and beautiful nails and you want clients to keep coming back to you, you will do these steps. All right, guys, so once you completed sanding off the nails, I actually went in with what's called a barrel bit, a fine one. Um, it was my first time using that. I usually just use a, um, a smaller, like, cuticle bit, I guess it's called. I'm not really sure, but I'm going in with a fine barrel bit and just getting a little closer up and personal with her cuticles. Um, and once again, it's all about reputation. I will be doing this to all 10 fingers. Um, I'm pretty anal about the nail prep, um, you know, but what can I say? My nails last my clients a very long time. Um, I love when my clients come back every two weeks like they should, but, you know, sometimes things happen and they don't, but it's nice to see their nails still intact. You know, even with the growth. The growth is pretty freaky. It, it kind of makes me proud. <laughs> Just to know that, you know, <laughs> they last like that. But as you can see, I'm just getting up and close in that cuticle very gently. But, you know, still very attentive um, to, um, you know, getting up in there and getting any kind of skin. If my sanded it made a mistake or just getting more up in there to you know expose more of the nail the cuticles are a major part of your nails um you know the cleaner they are the more professional your nails will look 
And once again, sorry for the background noise. This is my life. This is reality. I am a mother um, to L <laughs> an infant baby who is very opinionated. So, sorry but not sorry. You do have the option to turn down the volume, okay? Okay guys, once I have completed all 10 fingernails, I'm just gonna go in with my cuticle nippers. You can purchase these at the Dollar Tree, Walmart, um, Amazon, anywhere that sells like beauty supplies. I'm sure Sally's, you can get this. And I'm just going in clipping away the dead skin. You don't want to clip any of the lively skin because that can cause harm to your client and even develop a potential infection. And depending on what state your regulations may be different, you may not be able to clip at all, but especially never live skin. So keep that in mind and always find out what rules and regulations um, your state requires, you know, so that way, you know, anything doesn't fall back on you. And I'm just doing this gently but effective. And you'll know lively skin from dead skin. Um, dead skin usually has a lighter, crustier look to it. Um, the texture is rougher. And whereas the lively skin, looks, it looks more fleshy. You'll be able to tell and more healthy. So, you know, you will be able to know. And if you don't feel comfortable cutting the cuticles just let your client know that you don't feel comfortable clipping the dead skin you can even try to go over them with a sanding bit on a low speed and um that can help as well it won't be quite as effective but it will be able to help so i hope that that assists you guys in your nail journey as well when it comes to clipping the cuticles Okay, guys, so I'm just dusting her off with my little nail brush duster. I did purchase this on Amazon. I got a little tongue tied, excuse me. I purchased it on Amazon. Um, and I'm just um, pulling out my nail tips. Um, I'm pulling out some natural nail tips and also some clear nail tips. These nail tips have been um, previously shaped from the company. They're not the shape that I desire, but you know it's a little easier than just getting regular square tips it's already kind of narrowed down and you just have to narrow it some more or keep it like that if that's what you desire using kds glue i'm going in with my natural nail tips and i am just sizing her up from side wall to side wall very important that you don't use a nail too small never or don't use a nail too big if you have to use a nail that's too big Okay, that's fine. You just need to file it down a little bit on the side so that it would fit. Never use a small nail because I guarantee you it will definitely crack. And if it don't crack, it will lift. So please pay a lot of attention to that. You just want to get, you know, a little nice grip on your client's finger. And you want to um, size her up and make sure that you apply the nails straight. Okay? So... Just keep that in mind. I'm just um, finding nail tips and just sizing her up and making sure that I don't ever put a nail that's too small on her. So please keep that in mind. It's very important. I can't stress it enough. And just like everything else, it's repetitive. So I'm just going to go in and keep sizing up every finger. And I skipped the middle finger because I will be putting the clear tip on that one but if I wasn't I would just continue going in a consecutive order so I wouldn't skip a nail I would just you know continue to go to every finger so um that's that um you do um have options like if you don't want to use like 
nail tips, you are always welcome to use nail forms. I personally do not use nail forms. I have nail forms, but it's a rare, very, very, very rare if I ever use them. Um, I may one day do a tutorial showing you guys how to apply your nail forms if you are into that. Me personally, I'm not a nail form user. I feel like it's faster to use tips. But when it comes to nail forms, I guess it would be more convenient when it comes down to your desired shape. So if you're a person that loves like narrow, narrow coffin nails or something or narrow stiletto nails, you can form those yourself without having to do any of that, you know, filing. So that's the pro. And, you know, like if you just want um encapsulated nails or glitter nails or whatever like the whole thing no tip then that would be something that what would, would pretty much interest you it's not for everybody it's a acquired type of thing so you know but don't knock it till you try it but me personally i just can't so i'm rocking with the tips and her hands look like they're really really tiny but her nail bed is actually like a normal size. Her nails um, are <laughs> regular. I want to say normal um, size. She just got little hands, you know. It'd it be like that sometimes. <laughs> so you just work with your client. You know, her nails were fun to do. So that's always great. Okay, so I hope you guys are familiar with the straight edge clipper. If not, do yourself a favor and purchase some. Um, it does cut down more filing time as well. So I'm just clipping off like a little bit of the sides. That way I don't really have to do way too much filing because I already am like a serious filer anyway. Um, because I'm like so anal about shaping. And I'm a good shaper, but I feel like I can be a whole lot better, you know. It's little things that we can critique about ourselves. Um, I want to be a faster shaper. 
you know, I would like um to increase my speed. So I just try to do little things to increase my speed, which is one of the, these are, um, I'm sorry. <laughs> which is, uh, <laughs> I'm looking at my child. I'm doing one of these things now to increase my speed. So just keep in mind, you know, always think of little things that can help you with your process. And I'm going to do this to every finger. All right, going in with a 100-100 grit nail file by a company named Iridesi I found on Amazon. I pretty much do like their files, so check them out. I'm just going in and perfecting that shape. Um, now, honestly, you guys, for real, for real, you do not have to do too much filing right now. Like, all you really had to do was just define your shape a little more. I kind of went in on it, um, but you don't have to do this because keep in mind, when you do apply your acrylic, you're going to lose that shape. Um, you're going to have to come back and file it anyway. So, really, being anal about it right now was, like, not the key answer, but it's just me and something that I do. Everybody has their own preference, and... Um, sometimes, honestly, sometimes I just hurry up and shape them before the acrylic application. And sometimes I get a little anal about it, but you know, to each his own, like I said, it's the end of the day, whatever, winding down, why not? And you just want to get the desired shape to, um, every fingernail. And then I go in with a sanding bit and I blend in the tips where it meets the natural nail. I just blend it in. Um, clear tips are optional, but I'll blend those as well.
it's always nice to ask your client if they are comfortable with their shaping when you are done. Um, that way you can go back in and fix anything that they do not like. My client was satisfied. She loved her shaping. So we were able to move on. And I'm just setting up um, everything I need for the acrylic application. Um, and the products that I'm going to be using today is Mia Secrets um, Rose nude color it's a cover nude um glam and glitz acrylic glitter powder called cleopatra and i'm just using asp to dehydrate her nails that is a good tool to use as far as getting rid of any oils that may be left over and just completely drying out the nail bed you know another further step to not cause lifting and the primer of the day is going to be young nails protein bond um, it's a good primer to invest in. Um, so I'm just going to go around applying primer to her nail bed, not the acrylic. I'm sorry, not the artificial nail tip, just the natural nail. That's the only place you need any primers because plastic adheres to plastic, okay? Um, whew, I'm sorry, I'm out of breath. I was chasing baby. Um, so the primer is um, basically, you know, an assist to you know something artificial adhering to something natural so it's a helper and you need it because without primary your nail will pop the hell off so there are a lot of factors here that will have your nails popping off and your clients being mad at you for spending money and won't come back the brush i'm using i found on amazon it is a number 10 kamisi brush um, so far, I like it. I'm really not a small brush user. So, you know, for the sake of, of the tutorial, if you're a beginner, um, I recommend a smaller brush. But I use a 14, and so this was kind of foreign for me. Um, but I did just want to try it anyways. But um, I will say with me using a smaller brush as a larger brush user, um, it was kind of interesting getting my liquid to powder ratio up because I'm used to drawing in more liquid with my brushes. So I did draw in a little more liquid than was needed on this set. But once again, you know, just trying out different things. Um, I'm a number 14. Um, so yeah, this is a 10. And this is the Mia Secret cover powder right here. Um, and Mia Secret is on a runnier side anyway. So imagine me using a number 10 when I use a 14 um on a runnier acrylic you know so it was a it was a little process but it worked out um yeah so the paper towel if you're wondering is a Scott um super absorbent paper towel um they use these in the mechanical shops it's a little actually it's a better absorbency than Viva but Viva is great as well so anyway, back to this, um, you know, I get close to the cuticle as possible, but not on it. And I always clean on messes. Um, so I go around the cuticle, wiping it, you know, just to make sure that there is no product touching that cuticle. Because if you do have product on the skin, once again, you will cause lifting. So be very, you know, attentive to that. Pay close attention to what you're doing. Never be heavy handed with your product. Always be very light handed. Um you know, and just smoothly apply it. Always do the pat and stroke method. So to get a product uh, where you want it to be, you want to pat it. And to bring it down, you want to stroke it. Always gently. You can, um, let's say you started with a big ball of acrylic or something, and you started at the top. You want to drop that acrylic, and then you want to start patting it down. And then when you get closer to where you want to be, you want to just stroke it down or swipe it down very gently. And that is how you apply the acrylic. Always um, keep looking at your nail from the side view and seeing where else you need product at. Because nine times out of ten, you can be looking at top of the nail, at the barrel of the nail. And you won't see all the imperfections that are on the side. So always keep a good look of where your product is needed okay um 
sometimes I can say for color acrylic, that rule sometimes doesn't apply because when you use color acrylic, you want to just use it as a base, um, as like a paint, um, not a strength builder. But since this is a cover powder, I'm just going to apply it like I regularly would, like any type of like clear or um, natural color or whatever the case may be. But if it was just like colored acrylic, like reds, yellows and stuff like that, I would apply a very, very, very thin layer and just use it as a base for color. And then I would build my strength with like my clear or my my natural pink or, you know, something like that. That's what I would build my strength with. So um, that doesn't really apply right now because I'm, um, I'm actually building my strength with my cover powder. So doing the same thing there, you guys probably noticed that I always apply my first bead of acrylic where the natural nail and the tip meets. That's a very good tip. I just feel like by me doing that, it'll be more secure. And um, I always um, build my apex last. The apex is the very last um, bead close to the cuticle um, that is supposed to be the highest point of the nail. Just like you have an apex in your head, you want to have an apex on your nail. So always build your client an apex. That's good for the strength. Um, it's good for, um, I want to say, reducing breakage. Um, you know, because without an apex, your nail is just going to be flat and it won't have any type of structure to it. So this right here is my apex bead. Sorry, Rose was crying. This is my apex bead and I'm just giving it a nice gentle swipe and blending it in with the other acrylic that's already there. I'm cleaning up my mess with the tip of my brush, just getting around that cuticle too. Now I'm just doing the same thing to the other side, just cleaning up my mess. And sometimes I might not even have anything there, but I just want to double check and it's good to always just go over your work. Um, and I'm just smoothing down everything and just blending everything and making sure everything is nice and smooth. That way I don't have any excess filing to do. I don't like to file. Um, so when you lay a good smooth foundation, you won't have to do nothing but just go over it real quickly. So keep that in mind. And I'm just being anal about cleaning up around there because I really don't want any um, acrylic to be on her skin. I don't like lifting. I don't like any of those problems. I want my client's nails to last a long time. So I'm anal about that too. So that's another thing I'm anal about. But it pays off. So you guys want to um, pick that tip up as well. Skipping the um, middle finger, I'm just moving straight over to the index. And I apply the bead right above where... The tip and the natural nail meets again, which is a very good tip for you guys. Um, I also, if you notice, I clean the sides of the nail because I try to keep as much of that shape as possible. So once again, I don't have to rebuild um, that shape when I'm filing, even though it's going to happen. But it's a lesser, you know, amount of filing to do. Then I place a bead underneath that first bead and I just continue to build my strength in my nail um, patting and swiping and this one is going down further at the tip and I'm just going to stroke that on up to meet its friends and cousins and let the rest of it drop down let gravity do its work and pull the rest of it down itself and while gravity is doing its work you see me swiping the sides and then I just clean up the free edge which is the very tip of the nail yep so swiping the sides and stroking it down making sure everything is nice and smooth which is beautiful you want to always have it like that. You want to always take the steps to have a nice blend going on. Um, and if you are a beginner, do not worry about the time. Never try to rush yourself until you have your application where you want it to be. Okay? Then you can start thinking about time. But right now, you need to focus on your application. That is the most important part. Your application. Speed is last. So placing that bead closer to the cuticle. I'm just patting it in there and swiping it, cleaning up the side there, swiping some more, as you can see, but everything is very gentle. And this is a repetitive process as well, you guys. So I'm just going to be quiet and just let you guys see. And also, um, keep checking your nail because even though you might have did four beads or three beads or whatever method you prefer, 
you might still need product somewhere else. It doesn't matter. So don't worry about how many times you apply the bead of acrylic. Don't ever worry about that. Just worry about where your product needs to be and how the nail looks as a result. Okay? So do what you got to do. Don't rush yourself. Your client will appreciate to leave with good nails than to leave with a fast set of rushed nails that don't look good. So always do your best. Okay, you guys, so this is going to be her accent nail, and this is going to be a beautiful gold by Glam and Blitz called Cleopatra. It's so pretty, you guys, and it's so easy to work with. Um, it's not runny at all. As you know, Mia Secret is a very runny product. It's a good product, but it's a runny product, and it's more of the affordable side. Glam and Glitz is a little more pricier, but I mean come on like they have a wider range of selections and 
the acrylic color is amazing and the product is amazing and easy to work with i love it um i'm a newer person to glam and glitz um <laughs> but i have ordered me a nice amount of their supplies i will be featuring those in the next coming videos i'll do 48 swatches for you guys maybe 54 so stay tuned for that video and I'm just doing the same thing that I do to any other nail, but actually it's quite easier because of the product that I'm using is so much easier to work with than me a secret. So if you are a beginner and even if you're not a beginner, um, if you've been doing this a while and you do use me a secret um, and you notice that it's running, don't worry. You're not alone. Everybody knows it's running. It's just running. Um, but I guarantee when you try Glam and Glitz or, you know, probably Valentino powder, um, you will see the difference and you will know that every product is not running. You just have to venture out a little bit and see what works for you. Cause now I'm thinking of, um, leaving me a secret <laughs> after I'm finished with, um, all their products. And I've been using me a secret for a very long while. Um, and I didn't venture off. Um, even when it came to like my color acrylics, I would just make them myself. Um, but now that I'm hip to glam and glitz and I, um, took the time to venture out, I really do love the product. It's so easy to work with and it's so smooth. You have to love it. But one thing I can say is not every powder is like that. Um, it's like one, um, type of powders they have in one of their collections is kind of chalky, I will say. And I've heard that you have to mix that with clear so that's just a tip um and once again i'm just repeating the process um this time i actually applied my first b at the cuticle um all i can say is it really doesn't matter um i have my own system and own preference of doing things um but it all just works out at the end once you get in motion and start getting to know you know your application and things like that you do what you want to do and you just make sure at the end of the day, the results are good and you have everything you need in the nail. You have your strength and you have good structure, good form, honey. So, you know, you just you just do what is comfortable for you. Um, I switch it up sometimes. Sometimes I always put a bead where the tip and natural nail meet. Sometimes I like to start up top. It's all about preference and it's all about um, your technique, okay? So get your technique down. You might have more than one technique, and that's perfectly fine. As long as it works and it's good for you and the client, there will be no complaints at all. So excuse the lip smacking. Um, I'm just going to do the same thing I did to the other hand. So, you know, I did say I was going to be quiet. <laughs> so let me be quiet.
Okay, y'all, I see y'all sticking through the process. I know that's right. This is the time where you want to place a layer of clear over your coloring so when you file, you don't take out that color. Look how good this napkin is. And I was working extra wet, too, so I mean extra wet. Yeah, so cap it. It's called encapsulating. But really, I really don't call this encapsulating because, like, the layer I apply is so freaking thin. It's not even funny because I know I'm not doing that much fouling. But you just want the clear or, in my case, I'm using a translucent natural pink by Mia Secret. I do like the clear. I don't really have a problem with it, but it's runny. Everything runny, girl. It's runny. And my voice is getting dry. I know you guys can hear the change, but just work with me. It's been a long day of creating nails and this homecoming weekend y'all so <laughs> phone been dying everything but you know it's worth it i'm just doing the same thing to every nail and i'm really like working wet um with this stuff um i think i even get even wetter <laughs> during this set because i'm just trying to um you know, throw that clear over there because I know it's getting chopped down anyway.
Okay, sis. So if you have made it to this video, this portion of the video anyway, then you have officially pushed the F through. Congratulations. Now, the next step is redefining that shape. So you just want to go back over what your acrylic have done and just make that shape pop out again as it did before you laid that acrylic. So all you want to do, and you want to push that skin back. Um, one side I have my thumb, the other side I have my index finger, and I it looked like I'm pinching, but what I'm doing is just I was moving her skin out the way so I do not cut her. And believe me, you can cut somebody with a file. I've done it to myself and I've done it to my clients, and it's all on accident, but... It happens. Um, so just be aware of that. Um, and I'm just making sure I get up um, in them side walls too. And just making sure everything is just blending with each other and looking good. And I'm going to repeat this process all the way until it's time for me to take my drill out, guys. Um, and I also like to um, put my file down vertically on my free edge just to get a straighter shape um, and a sharper straight. Uh, sorry, a sharper shape. So look out for that, and that's another tip as well. Some nice news.
Now, this is my favorite part. Um, because this officially lets me know that my nails have come together and I'm about to wrap it up and send my client out the door. Um, I use the fine bit for this. Um, I feel like you don't need anything coarser than a fine bit for this. Um, unless you have a lot of products to file down. But if you keep it smooth and simple, then you good. So using my fine cylinder, it's not, I don't even know what this one is called. Um, something, my fine bit, y'all. I'll let you know in the description. I'm just going around the cuticle with the very tip of it and cleaning it up like how I did with my brush. I'm just doing that with my, um, my drill. And I'm just, um, doing that until I see the natural nail coming through. So, um, just like a little piece of natural nail. Um, it's easy to tell. You just got to keep an eye out. And you want to keep your drill in motion. That's very important because you don't want to burn your client. And pay close attention to where you're placing your drill. You don't want to place the drill on your client's skin. You just want, you know, the drill to just clean up and tidy up and bring it together. And also um, take down any unneeded bulk or anything. Um, and if you don't have a drill, don't worry. Just know that you'll be doing a lot of fouling. So... You know, just keep that in mind. And you guys, you can also use the belly of your bit to take down block two. It's like contouring. That's actually exactly what it is. Um, making a smooth transition from your nail, like for like your apex areas and things like that. So keep that in mind as a tip as well. And once again, Rose is crying. So I have to, you know, get up out of here. But I'll be back.
And after this one, you want to repeat the process with the other nail, cleaning up underneath and all around, guys.
she checking out her nails she love them already so once you guys completed that step you are like one step away from being at the final end just go in with the buff and black that's important as well um people think that this is not an important step but it really is buffing gets rid of any scratches that were caused by you fouling either by hand foul or e-foul you guys so please get rid of that please buff away your scratches um because when you top coat it it won't be too nice if you don't buff out you'll see all those imperfections and if you have like a clear nail or a capsulated nail once you put that gel polish or that top coat whatever you decide to use you'll see those imperfections but if you buff it instead of skipping that step once you top it off with your clear it will be perfect you won't see any scratches or anything like that it will be very mirror like like very glass like so you know please don't skip this step it's a very important step. It gives your nail a nice smoothness um, and just gets rid of those scratches. It's very important, guys. Um, and this is like one of my favorite parts as well because I know I'm almost finished. All right, and I'm just um, dusting her off, and then I'm going to clean up my area so I can get prepared to top coat her and send her on her way. At this point, you can send your client to the sink to wash your hands, or you can easily get some alcohol wipes and just wipe off any excess dust away from her nails. It's completely up to you, whatever you want to do. I choose to do this. No need if you're getting up out of your chair and away from my desk. You know, let's just sit here and push through so you can get where you need to be and I can get where I need to be and everybody's happy. And they like the alcohol anyway, guys. Okay, and I'm going to be topping her off with my one door gel top no cleanse polish um, that I purchased from Amazon. 
all 10 fingers. Um, and I'm going to be sticking her in my sun light that I also purchased from Amazon for 30 seconds as recommended on the bottle. It says 30 to 60 seconds. It's all about preference, um, you know. So do that. And I always apply two coats. And once the two coats are done, I top her off with cuticle oil and they'll be done. And I'll send her on her way. So I want to thank you guys for tuning in to this tutorial. I hope you learned something very um, teachable and very important and imperative to your journey as being a nail tech, nail artist, whatever you want to call yourself. It's totally up to you. I do thank you guys for taking the time out to watch my video. You know, that was real nice of you. And please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know if you want to see more. Let me know if you want to learn more. Ask me any questions. This video was recommended by someone, a YouTuber actually, um, asked me what do I do um, to prep to get my nails to last so long. And this is my answer. And I figure i show you better than I can tell you. So you guys have a blessed one. Thank you again. And I'll see you in another video. Bye.